This is the Toffee Web Podcast. Held by Mengi. Penalty Everton. Had to be. Calvert Lewin to get the better of Kaminsky and put Everton in front. Calvert Lewin right down the middle. Calvert Lewin thumps it home. Laconga, Adebayo, Adebayo. Well, it was great chest control and a brilliant finish from Elijah Adebayo. From my point of view as manager and the staff, I thought we were a little bit off with the ball. You know, a pocket in the first time when I thought we played well and, and controlled a bit of that side of it. The, the bit I am pleased with is the resilience of this side has grown. You know, people often remark to me that in the past, them games go against you. They're not doing now. You know, we're finding a way to make sure we look up. So some of the defending at the end was first class um, to make sure we at least come away with a point. A grueling, mentally draining 2023-24 season is winding down, with safety on the pitch secured in plenty of time, but it feels as though the struggle for Everton's future off it still has an awfully long way to go. Barely a day seems to go by without a fresh negative headline about the Toffees' prospective owners, 777 partners, and their various financial entanglements and controversies. And while they got their latest tranche of funding to the club under the wire last week, Kicking the proverbial can down the road until the end of the season, the supports of representative groups aren't prepared to wait that long and are demanding Farhad Mashiri change tack now. Uh, it almost makes what happens in these last two games feel a bit redundant, but at the end of the day, the football is what we're here to, to, to talk about, so we'll do our best to focus on that, although uh, so much of what's ahead over the summer is going to be inextricably linked to whatever does or doesn't happen regarding the takeover. Hello, Blues, and welcome to the Toffee Web Podcast. Paul, Andy, Adam and myself will uh, cast our minds back to last Friday and Everton's draw at Luton before we look ahead to Saturday and the final home game of the season when already relegated Sheffield United uh, come to town. But uh, I will just briefly mention the uh, takeover saga to the extent that we can talk about it and uh, try and find something new to say about the situation. Paul, it seems as though the whole situation is coming to a head. Uh, we've got uh, Alan Myers of Sky uh, reporting that Farhad Mashiri met with uh, Josh Wander in London this week to try and get some clarity, in quotes, over the situation and potentially a resolution. They, he said before before Saturday's game, which seems a bit uh, unlikely to me, but uh, have you got any more thoughts on this beyond what we've already said? Well, I think, firstly, it, it, it's hard to fathom that that would be yeah, within the next forty-eight hours or so. Right. You know, it really isn't it? That 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 does that doesn't seem uh, unless he's got some real inside intel uh, there, which he might not be able to share, or you know, it might it might be something that's going to land tomorrow or something. Who knows? Who knows? Should I should he's battered this one away enough times now this season in this press conference? I imagine that'll happen one more time tomorrow. Um, uh, it just feels well. I'm glad it's coming to a head. If that's the, you know, I think we all we all need to, to move on from uh, all, uh, seven seven seven. It's never really felt right, has it? You know, it's never really, you know, at, at any point. And he, it, yeah, I've always sort of kind of wanted to sort of give them benefit of the doubt a little bit, and just you know, it's 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 a fresh start. They 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 they, they, they you know they're involved in football clubs. They, should have some idea of knowing what they're doing. It's you know, it, it, hopefully it can work. But it's, the way it's just rumbled on and on, and um, there's always been a lot of doubters out there from day one. Uh, to be fair, as well, and I think like you know, they, they've never had an easy ride from anyone. That's fair to say. But it's sort of like I was just thinking about this before a little bit, and I kind of think, is it kind of win-win for seven 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 in a way? And that like they've you know they've they've, they've been paid off. You know, they pay they've, they've supported Everton with a number of loans now, which have kept us afloat uh, by all accounts um, there'd be high interest or you know certainly interest and certainly be getting a reasonable amount back from them when their takeover happens presumably without them and um, 
maybe I, I don't know if you look at it if you you, you put your sort of ten hat conspiracy theory cap on then maybe it was a bit of the plan all along and for that this year we needed somebody who could come in and sort of bridge that gap somehow or other maybe they, they'd exhausted all the sort of potential sort of like quick loans and uh, opportunities there and maybe it was a sort of kind of win-win situation and that like all right we'll 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 go for the takeover process and uh and then uh as and when that sort of unravels and that like okay fine somebody else is ready finally so at that point ready to come in um and then hey presto 777 seven, seven, get their get their loans repaid etc when this hopefully this white knight is hanging around and ready to come in so uh we'll just have to see what happens but uh intrigued intrigued to see um where this next road takes where, where, where the next road is from this and um yeah, let's, let's, let's hope that Alan Myers is right because I think we just need to, need to move on either away from this, really, don't we? We need to Josh wander on, don't we? <laughs> um, very good. Very good. That's all I've got to say. I haven't got anything else. No insight, no understanding of the situation, uh, nothing. Absolutely zero experience in this field or this area. But I, I think even if, even if you do, it's, it's clearly a mess, isn't it? I mean, it's over a month since Fahd Majiri said we were in the home straight and to bear with us. And now he's supposedly going for talks with 777 to try and get some clarity on the fact that there just appears to be red flags here, there and everywhere but with this group. So, yeah, let's hope it can be resolved soon. Let's hope that, as you say, Paul, someone else is waiting in the wings so that we can start to get talking about the things that we do understand a bit about, which is players we probably need to buy and um, and a big summer ahead. And that's not going to happen with this group. There's It's... It, all, all, all the evidence just points to disarray um, in in every operation, both in and out of football. So whether that's by Saturday or not, let's hope for all our sakes and particularly for the future health of this podcast that we don't have to talk about 777 and Evans finances for too much longer. I mean, I, I, I'm like Ad, I've, I've got no knowledge, no uh, insight and certainly no experience. But surely if this is going to be quote, resolved by the weekend, it can really only be that it's a no, can't it? It can really only be that this is now finishing because there's no way they're going to be able to wrap up any kind of actual deal by the weekend. So what was meant by that kind of carefully worded tweet um, in terms of a resolution? I mean, what could a resolution be? Could it, I mean, obviously a, well, 777 are now moving on, but they're not going to take control. That's one resolution. Uh, a resolution could be that, yes, they will move on to complete the process at a later date. That could be a resolution. I mean, if you if you call that a resolution, I suppose the other one is that it's going to be resolved by continuing exactly as we are. Um, and, and 777 effectively footing the bills to keep the lights on until... Someone else comes in, or I, I don't know. I mean, what it what it means time wise for the club is quite scary, really, because even if by Saturday they said, right, we're going our separate ways, this deal isn't going to happen anymore, we're then in a position where the whole thing starts again. That there needs to be months of due process. Uh, if, even if a bidder came in Saturday morning and this deal finished Friday night, I mean, there's still months of this to go. Who is going to pay for Everton Football Club to keep running in those months? Because it sure ain't going to be 777 if they're off the table, you'd think. It doesn't look like it's going to be Farhad Mashiri. So are you then, are you then taking loans or whatever it might be, loans with a view um, again. And I don't know. It, it, it's, um, now I think now the football side of things has become a lot more um, easy to put to one side because we've, we're, you know, we're safe in the Premier League. I must admit, I've been thinking about this probably more than, than is necessary. Um, and it is scary now. It's like, well, this has to... This has to not only be concluded, but it has to fall in an, our favour time-wise. Otherwise, you could easily see us starting next season with some kind of penalty again. And um, that's what none of us want. Um, 
So yeah, I'll leave it up to the experts to talk about it properly. But my just feelings as a fan are now worried about this as if I needed a bit more Everton worry in my life. (laughs) That's exactly what's happened to me. You know, it, no sooner have you got some clarity on the football side, and, and, and just just we had just had one, we had a week, we had a week of of of, uh, of happiness, didn't we? And then it all just uh, it all just sort of fell apart again. Yeah, I think uh, the reason why it's come to a head would appear to be that if there's any substance to these legal challenges from uh, Leadenhall Partners and whatever the other company, the London-based company that is suing. Uh, 777 partners for uh, for fraud in, in in New York. If there's any substance to those allegations, then it really would seem as though, you know, they don't have any more money available. Certainly, if ACAP are withdrawing uh, their financial support to 777 partners, and the and the implication now is that that was where all the money was coming from. You know, they were loaning loaning Everton money at a at a certain rate, and then you know probably a slightly higher rate than they were uh, being charged themselves uh, by ACAP. And if ACAP are putting the plug, then it seems as though uh, they really have reached the end. You know, where 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 it leaves the club, the the sense that I'm getting is that having got to the end of the season and with June just around the corner and therefore the potential to make a couple of sales and, and you know, sort of ease the, the the immediate financial crunch, there's around about maybe 55 to 60 million pounds left on the stadium that might change with them as the fit out it continues. But, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of in manageable territory now if we can just buy a bit of time uh, if... <laughs> whoever's in whoever's in control at this point is it Farhad Mashiri is it MSB Sports Capital if whoever can uh, arrange some some sort of short term uh, debt restructuring just to get us through the next few months then hopefully we can you know, we can stave off the uh, the dreaded A word because uh, uh, as you said Andy the, the thought of starting next season with minus points which may happen anyway due to the uh, you know, due to the the, P, the Premier League's PSR nonsense, which you would think at this point that, given that the fact that the club is practically <laughs> on the verge of administration anyway, what is the point in uh, in charging them even? They're taking even more points away uh, for, you know, for basically violating the sustainability rules when <laughs> the club clearly is virtually unsustainable as it is. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. It's uh, as we've said. There's not there's not much more we can say. I think what this late what these latest allegations and events around seven seven seven, you know, the collapse of the airline, the fact that apparently Standard Liège now are unable to pay their players, they've have a third transfer ban in twelve months that's been handed down to them by uh, by the Belgian FA. I think it's coming to the point where we can almost categorically say as a fan base that seven 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 partners is not. They're just not the right people. And I think we would just be uh, not so much going from out of the frying pan into the fire, but maybe out of the frying pan into a volcano. I mean, it was just, it doesn't seem to be viable in any way, shape or form. So yeah, let's just wait and see. Hopefully something breaks within the next couple of weeks and we can get some clarity on it. And uh, yeah, move into the summer knowing, just, just having a bit more idea of, well, a whether the club's going to survive, and b what uh, what we can do about team building and and rebuilding a team that that's going to need a fair amount of surgery over the summer. I haven't shared the same level of like sort of concern. Yeah, <clears throat> and that's not because I'm not concerned about it. And just <laughs> I feel like I'm just so like Evertoned by like by all by, <laughs> yeah. by, by, by all this. You just like so it's it's like a weekly disaster, isn't it? You know, it's there's, there's it feels like for the last. A couple of a couple of years at least it's just it's, there's something new every week even if it is a lot around the same subject it's, it's just like oh this week uh oh an airline's uh, uh, an airline's gone bust with shit with people about to board with 777 well and week after oh they're getting uh they're getting sued for like fraud and the week after that it's just all it's just another story and a lot of it is woe due to due to all the sevens and I just can't help but sort of like, just not like, you know, I know it's serious and I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay it, but just like, honestly, I just, I just haven't had that worry that, that uh, because it just feels like 
it's just been one big worthy relentlessly for Everton for such a period of time that I've, you probably know what I mean. You could just you just kind of developed a bit of the thick skin to it and just are like, oh, okay, that's the latest, is it? We're, oh, we're on the verge of, you know, they, they've, they've, they've called in the insolvency <laughs> people now. It's like, oh, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's always something. It's, it's just such a circus that um, you just wonder what's next. So, uh, yeah, look, look, look forward to next uh, next week's caper and try not, try not to be, try not to be, uh, try and look on the light side of life a bit because uh, I think we've earned it as Evertonians and uh, it'll all be okay one day. We did say it was a bit like a soap opera, and yeah, you do get that feeling of, oh yeah, how many things can happen on this strange street or in this village? How many murders can take place? It doesn't doesn't really make any sense, does it? Um, I think I think that the sad thing is that yeah, you're right, Paul. The you know it's it's out of our control, and it is just a, a bit of a, a sideshow. But then the worry is that the man in charge, who is supposedly a master accountant, also seems very blasé about a takeover that was announced back in. Like September, it was it was near the start of the season, wasn't it? So September, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there seems very little concern, and on the surface, at least, very little action from him. Um, to the point where obviously the shareholders were calling for something this week, some kind of announcement. Maybe that's what's stirred this development, um, or yeah, little kind of side plot this week. But um, yeah, I, th- I think I think we are just waiting for that that big reveal, aren't we? That I don't know what's the soap moment, a tram crash or something like that, but whatever's going to happen next and uh, see what happens from there. I suppose my, the, the reason I'm, well, I suppose the, the main reason I'm worried is it comes back to football in that, you know, even if we manage to get to the end of the season with all the bills paid through whatever loan we've got with whatever people, even if we manage to sell the right players that we would want to sell to raise some money um, in e- and maybe one that we don't want to sell, namely the left side of centre half that we won't name just in case anybody cottons on, you know, it, even if, even if Everton get enough money to get to a point where it's like, okay, uh, we can keep the lights on and maybe we can get a couple of players in that all takes so much time and you could quite feasibly start next season with a squad that is nowhere near the quality of this season. I mean, and let's be honest, at times it hasn't been great this season. Um, and that's what worries me, really. It all comes back to football in that, well, what's the team going to look like after all this? Um, and I can see, you know, at least one better team coming up, or who be it, or albeit they might start on minus themselves. Uh, but, you know, it, it yeah. Um, yeah, it's just worrying. It's, it's just it's just concerned me this week. Um, maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm just looking for Everton worry, having had it in my life for so long. But it it I don't need to look very far, do I? Let's be fair. <laughs> yeah, I, I managed to shake off the Everton worry with the on the pitch stuff, as I think I mentioned before. I just reached the point where I just had to have faith that be that we'd be okay, and and you know we were. But the uh, this. This obviously being with it being much more existential. Um, it, I don't know. Just last couple of weeks, it's felt it's actually felt very very worrying. Just for, just for the just for the pure, uh, as I say, the future of the club and and administration really would be uh, would be catastrophic. Uh, your point about the players is is important because we're getting to that point close to the summer where we need to start approaching players, not only our own players who we, we might want to keep, the likes of, you know, just a gay, but also potential players who want to sign me, sort of start giving them some indication of, you know, whether we're going to be able to do it, what sort of you know, salary package we can offer and all that kind of thing. Um, if we're not able to do that, we're going to, we're going to fall behind and potentially lose out to, um, to other suitors. So it's that it, it, it is, it is very concerning and it's why we need some resolution to this, to this very quickly. Uh, I think we are going to, we're going to be in a situation where if we do lose the likes of Onana and, and Branthwaite, we are potentially going to be a, a weaker team unless we can get things sorted out and bring in some enough, you know, enough sort of players on either free transfers or loans to, to sort of raise the quality across the board in terms of depth, um, not necessarily having replacing the quality of certainly Branthwaite, you're not going to be able to replace the quality of that. Um, that's going to take <laughs> that would take a miracle. But uh, yeah, it's 
it is worrying across the board, and you can you, you can feel that you can feel that urgency with uh, you know obviously the shareholders association coming out with their statement. Uh, the fan advisory board coming out with theirs. I think there's just a um, there's just a feeling now it's just gone on long enough. It really is getting to a farcical situation. But uh, let's try and talk about things on the pitch where we're now four games unbeaten. And uh, Paul, it would have been nice to roll down to Bedfordshire and come away with our fourth win in a row, but it wasn't to be. We had to settle for a point against Luton. Uh, what did you make of the performance and the result against Rob Edwards' um, seemingly championship bound side? Well, I think we can all agree that it wasn't nice just to be able to watch the game and yeah, relax and you know, <laughs> and, and, and not and not be concerned about uh, <clears throat> about an awful lot. And uh, particularly when you go ahead in the game fairly early too, um, the, the, the lads the lads did okay. It had a little bit of a sort of a little bit of an on the beach feel to it, I suppose, at times. But it, it's hard to criticise them too much for that. Um, yeah, I mean. Another, um, another day we might have won it. Another day we might have lost it. You know, I never, I never thought we were going to lose to uh, Luton Town three times in a season. I always felt we'd get something from this game, uh, even if it was a lot more by than gone it. So um, Luton Town for me it didn't really offer as much as maybe you know for a team that are desperate down there. But might, that might just be a you know uh, a reality for lack of quality, a number of the big, number of injuries they got, and you know. Running got of legs at this time of the season. They they've they've done well this season, Luton. But um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I thought, I thought they did okay. No no real complaints to me at all. I thought you know, there was no real stinkers out there. Everyone did all right, and yeah, um, not a bad point all in all. It really would have been really nice to make that four wins in a row, and then um, had we done that, look, Glaven got a real good opportunity to to what would have been five five wins in a row, and you're thinking when when did we last win five in a row? We're supposed to be going probably back as far as Roberto Martinez, perhaps. So that, um, it, 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 it's a long time ago since he won that many games in a row. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, well, quite quite happy with the, quite, quite, quite happy with, with, with the draw, really. And, um, yeah, just <laughs> cliche, but you just move on to the next game, don't you? Not really much to, and it feels so long ago as well, doesn't it? It does, <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, going to <laughs> When we said we were doing the podcast uh, tonight, I was thinking, what, what are we going to talk about? When was, when was the last game? <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was fine. Um, yeah, nice, yeah, nice little trip for the away fans on a Friday night, I guess, and a long trip. And uh, yeah, yeah, nice to not lose that one, I guess. And it would have been a sickness to concede at the very end there, wouldn't it? In the way over time, wasn't it? By by that point, but um, yeah, 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 not a bad point, really. Andros Townsend as well at the end. That would have been the oh, narrative, yeah. wouldn't it? Um, so it was nice, but we didn't have to worry about that. I um, I miss most of the game. So j- just like the last topic, I'm uh, yeah, just completely lacking <laughs> any <laughs> anything meaningful to say. Um, my my car had broken down in Huddersfield, um, which sounds like the start of a John Cooper Clark poem. Um, but <laughs> I was just completely focused on that. And thank God I was, because if I'd have been going into that being a relegation six-pointer whilst waiting for an AA man to tow away my uh, shit heap of a car, then I I would have been, well, I'd, I'd, I don't know if I'd have, been, I'd have been able to contain myself. Um, as it was, I was just beautifully distant from the whole thing. Um, not my car, but, um, but certainly from the game. And I think in reality, a, a point would have been probably more than good enough result, even if we hadn't have gone on that run of games, uh, the way of results have panned out and the fact that Burnley's sort of mini renaissance, um, that was that was cut short the weekend as well against Newcastle. Um, so all in all, as you say, Paul, a, a pretty solid point. Nice to see Dom getting another goal. And I, th- I think it, it might have been you, Paul, who mentioned it last week, seeing, seeing his leap back in, in that chance, um, that, that chance that he caused. Uh, that Kaminsky made a good save from. Um, nice to hold on. Ashley Young at fault for the goal and the fact that Luton themselves came out post-match and said that's who they were targeting. Um, that's something we probably could have guessed beforehand. Um, but, but when we talk about recruitment again, um, you look at someone like Young. I, I, I don't know what the situation is with a player like that because that area of the pitch, we're ridiculously short. So some some those kinds of players might have to stick around a bit longer than we maybe expect them to. Um, 
on the flip side, I think Luton maybe show us a bit of an example for next season with our recruitment. Players like Adebayo have been plucked from the lower leagues. Maybe that's a route we might have to take and might be a smarter, more sustainable way of doing things. Um, but in terms of Everton, we didn't learn a huge amount after the sort of euphoria of the last few games. It's just nice to know that we're going to be okay and that we can go into this final home game of the season with, yeah, a, a bit of time to catch our breath. Um, when we look off the pitch, as, as we've already said, um, we can quickly <laughs> draw it in very, very slowly and audibly again. But the fact is on the pitch, we've arrested the slide. We've, as you say, Lennon, gone four games unbeaten. If we can make that five um, and get some sort of result against Sheffield United, then it's a very nice way to end what's been, well, a bit of a car wreck of a season, hasn't it? I think considering one team in that game really, really, really had to win it and one team really, really didn't, um, I think it's another feather in the cap for the team and the manager at the moment that we didn't lose the game. And we could have quite easily won it, really. Um, Because if you think about it, that was Luton's huge chance to stay in this race. Um, Well, they're still in it, but you know what I mean, to stay right in it. Um, And I thought we did pretty well in that scenario. Um, I love the fact that, I mean, this shows why he's going to be such a top player, but I love the fact that Jared Branthwaite is celebrating a 99th minute block in a game that doesn't matter. And it's only for a point anyway. I mean, that just, I think that says all you need to know about that boy. Um, and and to be fair, about the the kind of, the culture that's been um, garnered in that area of the pitch, um, they don't like conceding goals. And I thought that was really a lovely little moment, actually. Um, I was just thinking, we'll probably concede from this corner now, but we didn't actually get to the corner, which is great. Um and it just keeps us rolling, doesn't it? It just keeps what a point does is it doesn't really there's no full stop in that sentence. It just keeps us rolling in this like nice little run of games where we're not losing. Everything looks a little bit brighter. Um I don't know about you though, about half an hour in, I felt like something from the Shawshank Redemption in that I I I was almost you know, these conditions I've been kept in for so long, uh, which I which which to the outside world look horrific, horrific. You almost you kind of almost crave a bit of drama. And I was thinking, I, I I, kind of almost miss that Everton gut of the stomach kind of feeling of, oh, no, this means the world. Um, and all of a sudden it didn't. Um, and so, you know, the Sean, Sean Dice redemption is, um, is, is, is a wonderful thing. But, um, but it, that was the only thing for me. I just, I just hadn't, I haven't had that feeling enough of not, of every kick not ma- mattering, really. Um, and it was just a very strange feeling. Uh, and I, I watched it with um, my partner and she said, like she she looked up after about 25 minutes and said, I think I preferred it when there was drama. I was like, mm, <laughs> I, I, I don't take your view, but I can see where you're going with that. Um, it was um, it was a very strange feeling watching that match. But um, yeah, delighted that it was so. I'm quite happy to have three games of that and then we go again. I guess the Sean Dyche redemption, which, by the way, is obviously clearly this week's episode now. Um, yeah, it's just, you're right. <laughs> it's just, you know, you punching uh, through a poster of Michael Keane on the wall and, <laughs> and crawling, <laughs> crawling back into it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, that is a very uh, strange kind of Stockholm syndrome you have going on there, Andy, where... <laughs> you, you you almost you almost miss the uh, you miss the, the the peril the drama the jeopardy <laughs> yeah it, it's a good thing that uh, that there wasn't that much riding on it because I just got off an eight and a half hour drive and I got back at home at ten thirty p.m. and thought, okay now I've got to watch the match which I did from start to finish it was nice not to have to worry about the uh, the threat of relegation uh, for me I, I mean I actually thought we saw a Luton side much more like the one that at one stage looked as though it might stay up. Um, I, I I thought that they they probably played about as well as they could, um, and I think that owed a lot to the fact that Elijah Adebayo was back. I think they've certainly missed him, and they might actually be uh, sort of closer to to Forest and maybe out of the bottom three if he played a lot more in the last few weeks. 
Um, for me, it was also quite a typical Everton performance in many respects. I mean, th- there were some some passages of, passages of play where we actually seemed to be playing with a with a bit of freedom. You know, the kind that comes from from knowing that you're safe. But you know, as usual, we lacked quality going forward. You know, we struggled with the without the width down the flanks that the natural fullbacks can provide. We didn't create too many chances, which obviously has been the story under Deitch for all the reasons that we've discussed at length throughout the season. Uh, Paul, the team selection might not have been that surprising. Deitch is stuck by the team that did so well, um, winning those three successive home games uh, where fitness is allowed. But were you surprised by the timing of his substitutions and the fact he didn't turn to a couple of players who haven't featured at all recently, like Dan Juma and Dobbin? Was Dobbin on the bench? Did he make it? Did he? I can't really recall. Um, yeah, maybe. Well, maybe not surprised because you know he doesn't really. You know, history has shown he doesn't really use his, his substitutions substitutions too often. I guess Dan Juma. But, um, I think we were saying this on the on the WhatsApp group, weren't we? You know, he's obviously not staying. He, maybe he's just on the point of view, like, well, he's not going to be here next season. What's the what's the, what, what am I going to learn from playing them? Maybe I don't know. It's a, you know, it's, it, it's quite sad, isn't it? If players they don't really get even like a, a few minutes here and there. But um, yeah, again, there's not really a lot of value in him, in him playing. Um, looking ahead to the next, I, I, I saw on his Instagram as well. He was he was at the the, the the Dortmund game last night, so I don't know how how involved he'll be uh, in, in in this weekend coming too. You know, so maybe may, maybe that's him finished. Ever I, I I don't know, but um, yeah, it's I mean. I suppose what you really want to see, and 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 when you're saying you know making changes to these things, is is the introduction of some some youth players here and there, perhaps. But um, you know, if the, but the, if there aren't really many included, maybe maybe the home game at Sheffield United might be a chance to to, to get a few of them on the pitch at, if things are going particularly well in the game, like Lewis Warrington and uh, uh, Hunt, the left back, has been involved a bit. You know, play, players like that. You know, possibly. But um, yeah, what one thing that was quite nice to see there was um. In, you know, going for the win a bit more, it would have been very, very easy just to sit on the draw. And I know that's all we got in the end, but going to up, to up top and, you know, for the bit in the game and giving Chimiti a run with Beto up there. And Chimiti looked there. It's one little bit of with, with Chimiti there when he got the ball and played a beautiful ball outside of his outside of his boot, which released Beto a bit. And um, he's looked quite, looked all right, Chimiti, the last couple of games, hasn't he? In the, in the, in the you know, we saw, obviously saw a lot more of them against um uh, with Brentford, and then um, yeah, you know, so maybe there's hope there for next season if you know, you know with, with with you know one or two players like him and Dobbin, who've we've probably learned a lot from this season, and uh, I think it's a good free season for them is going is is going to be the big thing, and then kicking on into next season more so than what you're going to learn from 10, 20 minutes here, you know, in this game and against Sheffield United. Yeah, I think Dyche, I'm not surprised he didn't change it, change it a bit more. I'd be a bit disappointed if he doesn't give, you know, the odd, you know, uh, some of the kids a chance against Sheffield United when the opportunity is really there. But you want to give these kids a go when, uh, you know, when it's when you need a lot, really. Not in the game, you know. Say we'd have lost that two one, it would have been a bit of a shame, you know what I mean? So, not no real complaints to me on that, really. Yeah, I mean, I I, I wasn't surprised that Dobbin didn't really get any minutes because I know he's he's been out injured for a decent amount of time and he he was getting opportunities under Dyke. You'd expect him to get some minutes before the season's out. Um, Dan Juma's, yeah, as, as you've just said, Paul, it's, it's a strange one. He'll be a, he'll be a player that it, it, it's, he's he's had a very forgettable spell, hasn't he? I know he's had bad luck with injuries, but also not seemingly favoured by the manager. Probably out of our price range, if we if he was to perform well, um, he taught Adrissa Garner gave that celebration, so that's something. <laughs> uh, uh, it's quite a good celebration as well. It's a memorable one, isn't it? So, um, and that, and that obviously did the trick. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, it's a worrying thing when the managers previously said um, not not too long ago that the academy isn't really producing enough talent when we are looking at that transition period over the summer where we're not like to have a lot of money. When I, I was thinking about it earlier when we were talking about 777 and um, obviously I had nothing to say, but I, I had some thoughts um, about the fact that we obviously spent money in inverted commas on Beto, but delayed that payment. And even those kinds of things are going to start taking effect in the summer um, at a time where, yeah, we're also clearly st- staring down the barrel of a bit of a financial gun. So it would be the ideal time to have some prospects coming through the academy, but it seems very, very thin on the ground. Um, obviously, the other advantage of young players 
in our financial situation is that it's pure profit, isn't it? It's why the Anthony Gordon transfers helped us out. Um, it's why other sides tend to promote youth at, at this point in time. It's 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 a sustainable model going forward. So maybe there are some diamonds that can be unearthed in the summer. Um, certainly Chimiti, as you say, Paul, looks looks promising and um, another good cameo. So I'd like to see more of him. But beyond that, it's it's a little thin on the ground, isn't it? Um, so may, may, maybe some of those youngsters who've who've, who've had minutes on the bench. Um, I think I think it was was McAllister out on loan as well. There's, there's a few there who could maybe maybe do something over pre season and, um, and and give us some bodies because boy, are we going to need it if even even a couple of the players are out of contract and certainly some of the um, the more prized assets um, if they leave over the summer, we're going to be very very thin on the ground. I like the look of Chimiti. Uh I think he played really well when he came on, uh, and he played well in a two. And I, I, I wonder. I've, I've heard a bit of, um, I've heard a bit of more frustration with Dy- uh, for Deitch this week about him not kind of trying other stuff. Now we're safe, and you know, different players, different systems, whatever. And I thought actually when he brought both Beto and Chimiti on as a two. I thought that was one way that he could actually try something else. I mean, we know he played 4-4-2 quite a lot of Burnley. Um, and I, th- I, th- I think it looked quite useful. I think it looked quite dangerous. And I, I liked how Chimiti played it. Uh, I, think he's got a, I think he's got a fair bit of ability. I, I said this after the Brentford game when I saw him in the flesh for the first time. He's got a bit about him and I like him. And uh, he seems to have a a lot more quality on the ball than I actually realised he he had. I've seen the clips from Lisbon, but then I don't know what I didn't really know what kind of opposition we were watching at the time. But um but no I I, I think he's got a real I think he's got a real future. Um and if that was something if if four four two or or a version of it was a system that Deitch wanted to go for going forward, you know if you keep hold of Calvert Lewin, you've got three strikers there who could quite happily play that. Um, it's just about getting the middle two, the mid, mid the midfield two, right in that system, and they have to be the right kind of players to play in a two. And we've seen in the past where we haven't had the right players like Gomez, and it kind of goes a believe it or not, he was actually brought on in that system. But um, but it, 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 over the course of a few games, it doesn't look quite right. But I think if you can get the middle two right. I'd be astonished if Josh Brownhill wasn't in the conversation, by the way, for the summer. Uh, with this in mind, um, I, 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 um, I, I think it could be something that works for us. And and, and you need someone. You kind of need someone on the right with a right foot, which is what we haven't got. And we haven't had for years. Um, down the left, we're we're absolutely fine. But I think if he can find somebody, and again, it's going to be on the cheap, isn't it? We know that. But if he can find someone that's going to play right side of midfield with a right foot. Uh, I suppose it could be Garner yet, but he's not really, really a winger. Um, then he, I, I, I quite like the look of two up front because it just it just makes you so dangerous when you have got the ball, um, especially with the kind of players we've got. So I, I enjoyed that side of it. I, I enjoyed that bit and thought, you know, that is that is Deitch in his own kind of way trying stuff. Um, and um, if we've got that to go to as a kind of plan B, I. I I'd be quite happy with that, or maybe a plan A if you're playing at home against somebody you you, you expect to get a result against. Maybe you can try it then as well. So, yeah, but I, I like the look of Chimiti. I do. I'm a Chimiti fan. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. I thought he was. I thought, I thought he looked really promising when he came on, as though he was ready to build on that that first start. Which I think, as we mentioned last time out, you know, your first Premier League start. Premier League's very difficult. Um, league to play in (laughs) and as we said last week particularly uh, in an Everton side where you spend most of the time just sort of chasing shadows and and really just sort of feeding off scraps so I thought he looked really really good that that that, um, through ball that uh, that he sent for for better was was really uh, encouraging and yeah I agree that it it was nice to see Deitch maybe feeling like he's he's got the, the scope now to to experiment a little bit now that the pressure's off I mean, obviously, at Burnley, he liked that uh, that sort of little and large combination, whether it was, um, was it Ashley Barnes or um, Jay Rodriguez playing off someone like Chris Wood. 
you know that that's potentially something they can work with. Obviously, where we've played four four two at other times this season, uh, most notably and uh, forgetfully <laughs> against uh, Luton in the home game when we played mm-hmm. uh, Calvert Lewin and Beto uh, in the second half off the bench. It really didn't work because they're just they're, they're too similar in profile. But I think that. Uh, the, yeah, the idea of having someone on there that that that, that Chimiti can play off and not have to be the lone striker, I think that's really the uh, the best thing for him. P- piss, piss taken aside, like <laughs> Neil Mopey uh, to come back too. Yeah, like if you know, yeah. like and he, he, he's he's quite adept in a four four two. No, there's a lot of dislike for him it's fair to say isn't it from Everton I think, it, I think it's uh, mutual isn't it for Neil for Everton as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean yeah I mean he'll it, probably be he'll probably, probably be sold um, probably back to Brentford which would be probably pretty good business I guess but uh, yeah just as it occurred to me there you know there, there, are, there is actually another option for a four four two sitting sitting right there as well if we care to go down that path but yeah can't see it somehow yeah exactly I, I think that um, the Mope has triggered enough appearances for for the for the loan deal to kind of to make it if i think there's a there's an arrangement in there to make it permanent if brentford want to trigger the 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 deal sounds like they do i'm um, obviously they're going to be losing probably going to be losing ivan tony this summer you would think he's going to go to go to somewhere else um so they they might want to keep with hold of what they have <laughs> and as you said adam there's, there's yeah. there isn't a lot of um love lost between <laughs> everton and neil mope so I, I would be surprised if we didn't just look to try and cash in for whatever it will be, you know, six, eight million pounds. I mean, we're going to take a loss on him clearly, but anything that we can get in it at, at, at this uh, at this juncture would be uh, would be better than nothing. But uh, yeah, I think uh, where Beto is concerned, he just needs to stay on his feet. I said it before, you know, he's getting into some really promising areas. And then just tumbling to the turf at the at the slightest contact rather than trying to score. He's not going to get penalties that way. The refs just aren't going to give them, especially, you know, if he starts to get get a reputation for doing that. But, you know, because as we said before, he, he comes on and, and, and the shape of the game changes just because of, of how different he is to Calvert-Lewin. And, you know, for, for those sort of first few minutes after he comes on, things, things tend to happen and, and chances open up. But he just needs the composure now to finish them and... and you know whether whether he's only going to, ever going to develop that way. I suppose we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I guess we we get that sort of second season, second full season to see if he's uh, if he's going to take take the next step in the league. Um, in terms of the midfield, I thought Onana and Gomez <laughs> did not really do themselves any favors coming off the bench. I don't think either one of them really uh, really got the temperature of the game. Didn't really look that arsed, to be honest. They looked like of all of all, of all the players, of all the players, you know, of that kind of flip flops and on the beach syndrome. Those two looked like they were already gone. They were already on their jollies. But um, yeah, I mean, overall, I, I think that, uh, and we can talk about this. Uh, you know, when, when we come to Sheffield United, I think that the Deitch is very much still and very much in kind of business mode. He wants to, to try and get as many points on the board before the end of the season as possible. And you know, I think overall that, that that we we gave them a good game, and we, in terms of the, you know the integrity of the league and wanting other the other teams down there wanting us to play our part in in trying to win, I think we did that. I thought that um, the Beto one, well, you're right, he does need to stay on his feet more. I thought I thought that was a penalty though. I thought the guy like he's he's getting away from me, drags him back, but like I was I was watching that in the pub, and the fellow next to me, I was, I was just at the bar and watched it. He goes. Why do players do that? I mean, if he if if, if he if, if he doesn't go if, if he if he doesn't try and go down, he's literally for the one goal. Yeah, I mean, but he's, you know, yeah. and that, I didn't even think about that. It sounds like blimey, you're right. I mean, so it's it is too much of this, and it's, this is players overall flopping to the ground too much, isn't it? And it's no surprise that you do because like a lot of t- you know a lot of the time you'll get a penalty for it. But yeah, if you have the right shirt on, you'll get a penalty for it. <laughs> if you well, have yeah, the right badge. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a thing, but like um, I think as well though. I mean, referees they, they must watch match today. They? they must mo- must watch other games, yeah. and they must see. You know, they watch Everton game. They see God that bow throws himself around a bit, doesn't he? Even before they've actually refereed themselves, and surely you can't help but have that. And when you're a team like Everton or one, you know, you don't really get a lot of these sort of decisions that say 
yeah, you're not going to start getting them just like that, are you? No. Yeah, you're better off just exactly. like, especially in a game that's looting, which doesn't matter. Go and bloody score. <laughs> Go, yeah, have, have a crack at that. It, it, that, that. That was my, my frustration with that. So yeah, it might have been a penalty, but if you're not, if you just go for the goal and get up and or try not to go down, and if they want goal there, and good, great chance. So it's strange as my well because his his best moment in Everton is probably that goal against Newcastle where he does exactly that. He drives forward, yeah, stays on his feet, keeps his composure, <laughs> True, and, yeah. and, and scores a goal. But yeah, you're right. Every other time he'll either take a very awkward touch, almost as if he's wanting to initiate the contact. Um, the uh, the chance, I think it was the chance against Burnley, where he, he kind of yeah. comes inside and then probably was a penalty. But again, it's, as you say, it's it's frustrating because it, he probably doesn't need to put himself in that position. Um, it, 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 we, we have got to remember, even though he's he's not as young and raw as Chimiti, he's still relatively young in football terms and he's certainly raw. So that second season's um, going to be really important for him. Um, I think it, it, it's, it's an interesting one. I've not really thought about the little and large thing with Deitch um, going forward, but maybe that's... And I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm doing transfer wish lists here when um, we're clearly going to be, well, I don't know, getting everything on credit cards uh, by the looks of it this summer. But, um, <laughs> but, but Shea Adams is potentially another one who comes back into the equation as a free transfer who yeah. is a bit more in that profile, a bit kind of... Yeah short, stocky, kind of got that Ashley Barnes sort of wiry presence up front. <laughs> um, I don't know these are real, you know, t- tongue-wagging names to, uh, t- to talk about with Everton centre-forwards, but... Um, Is that the honor? Yeah, no. can, we, um, can we leave the summer talk to stick to the content plan, please? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, uh... <laughs> I was just about to go on a, a big spiel like Jonathan Walters. Come on, no. <laughs> 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 it's this close. Thanks, thanks for reining me in. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I think I think better, better alongside someone else. I, I, as with probably all our strikers, apart from Dominic Calvert Lewin, who is well versed now in that lone Everton frontman role, um, it, it probably makes a lot more sense. Um, but yeah, as you, as you mentioned, Lyndon, whether those players are a bit too similar to do it together, um, that's probably something we need to try and work out. Maybe in these last couple of games, but certainly over preseason. Is Robbie Brady available? Can we can we look at Jeff Hen- <laughs> is Jeff Hendrick maybe? I mean, yeah, I don't know. Um, but I, I think I've just been looking at the table. And I know we know we we, we all need a, a little bit of fight because uh, um, otherwise, what's the point? Uh, I really want to finish above Brentford now, um, and uh, I think they are away at Bournemouth this weekend. And if we manage to beat Sheffield United, and they don't win or they lose, then, you know, we're more or less guaranteed to finish where we're going to finish. Um, uh, I, I also, in just, just in dispatches at the end, uh, oh, wow, 2-1 Madrid. Um, yeah. Um, also in dispatches, I, I thought it was really interesting about the Forest appeal not being successful this week um, and what that could pretend. I mean, I know these commissions are each to their own, and will continue to be very independent of each other. Uh, but uh, I just wonder what that might mean for ours as well. Um, albeit, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, there might be a that that might kind of set the tone for our appeal. Yeah, it might. I think the wording in in theirs more or less suggested that that it's going to be hard to you know to to overturn these things. I mean, I, I think ours ours concerns slightly different things. I think I think Forrest were lucky not to get points added back, to be honest, yeah. for uh, for their behaviour over the uh, you know the referee thing within our game. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to make much difference. So as, as we say, we need to try and hold on to this uh, into this fifteenth place because with every uh, obviously with every place it's worth two point two million. I think as we said last week, every every little helps. Um, but you know, in in terms of Saturday. The visit of Sheffield United, uh, the kind of meaningless end of season send off at Goodison that we all hoped it would be when I think when the fixtures came out last June. As we've said before, we'll be expecting or hoping to see some different faces in the lineup. But uh, Paul, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think he's going to make too many changes from from the starting lineup. We may see some faces later on, but I would be very surprised if he doesn't go with his strongest team uh, from kickoff. Yeah, I, I want him to be. 
true, true to the lads who've performed for most of the season, yeah. to be fair. And uh, I think that's that, that's only fair to them, and that's only fair to the supporters, really. I think, and um, you know, let, let's put our best foot forward and uh, and go for the win. Um, Ashley Young was limping pretty heavy as he came off at the end. Uh, I don't know if he might still be struggling. It could be a case where Ben Goffey goes at left back and uh, Seamus Coleman. And we don't know even know the situation with Coleman, do we? You know, I mean, he's out of contract, and mm. you know, it could be it could be his last game at Goodison Park for all we know. I was going to say that and that might be why he might might be a reason to start Seamus just for that re- yeah. for that reason. Because as you say, we we have no idea. It could be his last game. Yeah, which, which would be sad, but it, it could be reality. Yeah. And as you know, the if the and that's a sad thing about the sort of financial situation that we're in. We might have to make calls like that. Whereas if we we're in a just a reasonable situation, we'd be like, oh no, you're staying, Seamus. Without that, we literally, literally things could be that tough, you know. So, um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, Seamus, Seamus could be in, but you can't really see, you know, you, you know, I, I don't, I don't see Onana getting the luxury of that. Goodison Swan Song not from starting not from a starting graph anyway. I just don't really see any any real changes apart from maybe yeah Coleman in uh from the team which began at Luton really. Um and be a case of how the game is going to see what other changes are on. But yeah, I don't think we're really gonna see a lot. We're not gonna see I don't expect to see youth players really that I d I don't you know, it would be, it would be nice to, but again I'll be in a, you know, Chimiti might get some more minutes and but I don't really see an awful lot. Um, an awful lot of change in that, but that's um, maybe Dobbin, but and you know, getting on the pitch. Um, but yeah, that's uh, be interesting. We were saying Dan Jume is not, you know, he, he won't be included, we imagine, and uh, he's probably not, 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 he's not part of the plans, he'll, he'll be gone. Jack Abbasson, be interesting, he, he'll play the game, I'm sure, but he's he's also a lone player so by the same token. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm sure he's a player that Sean Dyche would like to take, and this is again another one, um, pretty sad things. We're, Fan base might well be divided on if uh, if we should retain Jack Abbasson or not, but I'm pretty sure Sean Dyche and Wone and Co would think, yeah, I'd like him as part of our squad for next season. Yeah. But are we in a position to, you know, to to to, to pay whatever it's going to cost to have him? You know, what I mean, it's it's tough, and this where this this where all that indecision comes in. But um, we've been through that. Uh, yeah, best foot forward, not many changes, and uh, yeah, hopefully a nice comfortable win and a good send off, and fans deserve it, and uh, the players do too. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't see him changing too much, um, other than like you say, Lennon possibly, um, possibly Seamus Coleman starting the game, um, which would be an odd way to sign off what's been an incredible Everton career in quite an understated, um, dead rubber of a game, really. But then, yeah, for, for for other reasons, it's quite nice that this is a dead rubber and we're not currently you know, nails clenched to the desk, worried about what's to come on Saturday. Um, the the fact that we can enjoy it and hopefully put on a bit of a show against a side who, as we've seen, concede a lot of goals, um, who have been down and out for some time now. Um, who I've got some players, again, someone like a Ben Britton Diaz maybe fits into that profile of someone who could, who could come in and feels a bit dyche doesn't he, I guess. Um, but, um, I think it's it's interesting looking at that side um, that started the game against Luton and thinking that potentially, and obviously we, we don't want to think about Branthway leaving, um, but you look at the likes of Young coming up to the end of his contract, Idrissa Gay coming up to the end of his contract, Harrison, as you just mentioned, Paul, coming to the end of his loan contract. Um, and then likewise with the bench, the likes of Gomez um, and Dan Juma, all set to leave in the summer as well. It's Yeah, it's... Look at looking ahead to summer. It's it's going to be it's going to be very 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 interesting. And as you say, we we can't really do what we maybe did in the Moyes era sometimes with the likes of Hibbert and Osman and g- give them that one extra year, give them that that chance to be around the squad and be a bit of a presence in the dressing room and um and, and do a nice kind of testimonial thing. We can't really we can't really afford to do that. I mean, Ashley Young's had plenty of flack, but he's one of our only fullbacks. But he's he's on eighty three grand. A week, there's, there's no financial sense in keeping someone like that on. Um, so again, he, he could be another one who we see for the last time at Goodison if he's fit to start. Um, but I'd expect us to win. I'd expect us to end a bad season on a high. And as you say, cement fifteenth place. Which, God, if if you'd have said that even as late as a month ago, we all would have absolutely jumped to the chance. So the fact <laughs> we're going into this game yeah. in that position. Is yeah, it's a bit of a miracle, isn't it? 
I'd love to see what kind of cement you'd use around the 15th place. It'd be quite gritty, wouldn't it? Quite kind of <laughs> really kind of, uh, yeah, stodgy stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I expect us to win the game. Um, I hope he picks a good side. I hope he picks what he thinks is his strongest side, like he did at Luton, really. Um, it is the case that if we if we win, then Brentford have actually got to lose, I think, for, for us to kind of stay 15th because we, we've got Arsenal away on the last day and that could mean all sorts for our goal difference. Um, so um, so any kind of win for Brentford on the last day, I think, would, would get us on goal difference. But um, but that, that place is worth, what, a couple of, couple of million quid? Um, and I, I, I can only echo the Coleman stuff, really. I've been thinking about that a little bit this week in terms of you know, Everton haven't necessarily been very good at this for some reason. I don't know quite why that reason is. We, 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 at times we seem like an overly sentimental club and bunch and yet we haven't got it right when players that have kind of given so much service have left and not really been given a send-off um and I don't want the club to get that wrong again um uh, and I I would have expected to know really if if it, I mean but then the people at the club may not know whether Seamus Coleman can be given a new deal you know, it might not be the case that anybody there knows that at the moment. And that's just a, a shame in itself. Um, but no, I'd like to see him play a part. And, um, you know, I think it's our, I don't want to be defeatist, but it's probably our last time this season to get three points. So I hope we get them. And I hope we win the game and win the game well. Um, we haven't got a great record, have we, again, uh, playing against teams that have already been relegated at Goodison. But um, I think Sheffield United last time did us, didn't they? Um, and, oh, yeah. and Bournemouth. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the young kid, um, the striker, is his name Jebison? Je- Jeb? Oh, yeah, we were yeah. yeah. quite heavily. Scored, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, like he was about twelve years old. He scored with his first touch, and he's never been seen again. Um, and I know Bournemouth did the same to us. So, I mean, I hope it's a bit different. Um, and I think, as we discussed in our last pod, I think Goodison deserves, and the crowd deserves that day of, you know, I might literally be in the sunshine, but that day of just day in the sunshine, just going watching your team and then playing better than the other team. <laughs> And being better than the other team and winning the game of football. I think everybody deserves that after the season we've had. Um, and uh, whatever combination of players that takes, I'm still kind of quite, I'd still be quite kind of focused on getting that result. Um, and yes, if we do go 2 nil up and God forbid, maybe 3 nil up, um, then maybe make the changes then. But um, but no, I, I, I hope Goodison gets its moment uh, in the sunshine on Saturday, that would be a lovely way to end what has been a pretty, I was going to say traumatic year at Goodison. It's not really, well, at times it has been. Uh, it's been a difficult year, let's say. Um, so, yes, let's hope. If, if there's anything to the the stories or the rumours or the speculation or whatever about Seamus physically not being able to, uh, you know, to do it anymore, then I would be surprised Obviously, if he if he gets offered that that new contract, offered in another year, Ashley Young, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. You know, certainly because he seems to be in uh, in uh, in good condition. But yeah, your point about the wages, Adam. I mean that again. It's all it's all speculation at the moment because we don't know what's going to happen with the takeover. But uh, that could uh, that could certainly uh, have so have some bearing on it. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Before we sign off, we wanted to acknowledge the sad passing of a couple of uh, Everton figures. Paul Holmes, a former defender, sadly died uh, at the age of just 56. And uh, Viv Busby, who was a coach under Howard Kendall during his third spell, uh, has also passed away. He was 74. Paul, any uh, any memories of, of, of Paul Holmes, your namesake that stick out? <laughs> um yeah uh the, the first um real season i i i watched everton an awful lot and i, I considered it was an awful season when we finished 70 the great escape season in 93 yeah. 94 
I watched that um, as a young kid. Watched that um, the season review over and over again to the to the point where I, I reckon I can still recite the commentary from <laughs> almost every game from it. And one of which uh, we beat Sheffield United four two, and Tony Cotty got a hat trick, and the commentary went exactly like, and the ball goes to Holmes. Can he put on a quality cross? It is a quality cross. And Tony Cotty gets his hat trick, um, and it was a really lovely ball from uh, from Paul. And that's yeah, the only and then that's that that's uh, probably the, the the main memory I have from him. Other than more, more sadly, and uh, I think Mike Walker's first game. Um, certainly, I don't. Jimmy Gabriel might have been in charge of the game, and Mike Walker was uh, was around. This might have been the curse of Mike Walker. It was uh, it was Bolton Wanderers uh, away in the third round of the FA Cup. And um, he managed, uh, Paul Holmes whacked the ball against his own crossbar trying to clear it. And then Bolton, one of us, scored in the rebound, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and went to replay, which we lost at home. Um, but yeah, the, 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 but the, from what I recall from him, uh, for you know, one of them sort of out with the blue signings, I think from Howard Kendall for about 100 grand or so, um, he did all right, you know. Like I think he played like 20, 28 games. I think I've had today for for Everton, and um, obviously, you know, not one a lot of people will, will remember. Um, I'm, but he struck me as quite a, maybe he'd be a pretty good modern day player. I like he, you know, quite nippy, got down the line quite quick, can put a good cross in. It all, all seems to be modern day fullback. It's it's more about attacking than it is defending a lot of the time, yeah. you know. So maybe. Maybe the year was the wrong wrong one for him, but um, yeah, I think and also probably circumstance as well. Howard Kendall saw saw something in him, which is pretty good judge of character. Mike Walker didn't. You could argue perhaps not a very good judge. Uh, so um, yeah, maybe circumstance was uh, was not kind to him, but um, yeah, God God bless him. Um, hope his family are all okay. I'm just trying to think if I've actually uh, I actually watched Paul Holmes live, and I'm just looking back through the games I saw in that in that period. I don't think I did, but he was. He was part of an Everton team that still had it's still ingrained in my memory. And I've mentioned this on the pod before when we were talking about, I don't know, strange results or freak results. Or, um, it, he was part of the Everton team that on the last day of the 92 93 season, we went to Man City and won 5 2. Um, and we went, I think we went 5 1 up. Um, and and I, I always remember that result, and I don't know quite why I do, but I just remember the fact that we'd scored five goals. I couldn't quite get my head around it. And um, Peter Beagery got a couple that day. Peter Beardsley, Precky scored, uh, and he was part of that team. And so so in in his own way, he is ingrained in my Everton consciousness. Um, so yeah, R.I.P. Paul Holmes. Oh, there you go, Blues. A uh, bit of a plug before we sign off. Uh, Steve Dickinson will be at St. Luke's before the match on Saturday, signing copies of our book, The Unofficial Everton Timeline. So if you haven't already got a copy and you'll be at Goodison, then you can pick one up and get it autographed by at least one of the authors. Uh, also, if you're into reading about the Toffee's history in general, friend of the pod and treasured Toffee Whip contributor Rob Sawyer has a new book out called Broken Dreams about the 1939 champions who were denied the chance to build a golden era of success by the outbreak of the Second World War. You can buy that one from Mount Vernon Publishing's new imprint, Toffeeopolis, or Amazon.co.uk. Uh, but that's it for this edition of the Toffee Web Podcast. Thanks so much for listening, and until next time, up the Toffees. Sunlight, sunlight.